Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning and welcome to our daily strength today with our rhapsody of realities. Father, we are grateful. Thank you, King of glory. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day. Precious Holy Spirit of God, you are welcome in our midst as we teach us the word of God in Jesus' name. Amen. From today's rhapsody of realities, word of God coming to us says, overcoming temptation through Prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. Overcoming temptation through prayer. Wow. Yeah. Yesterday we talked about the power of prayer, right? Prayer is very powerful. Now we are learning overcoming temptation through prayer. That means a prayerful person can easily overcome temptation. You know what prayer does for you? Prayer helps to condition your spirit and make you more sensitive to the realm of the spirit so that you don't just deal with things as, as though they are casual. Yeah. Glory be to God. Mama. So that temptations of this world, you can easily overcome them. Because remember, we're still in this earthly realm, right? And we have the wicked one who's opposing the works of God in our lives. You, are, you and I are called to reign over the works of the devil. That's why we reign this, on this earthly realm, which is our domain, as kings and priests unto God. So as a king, as you reign as a, you reign as a king, the devil will try to what, oppose what you are doing. And you will try to set traps for you as a child of God. You try to tempt you so you can fall into his what, into, into his snare. You see that? But God is, but, but God is, the, um, God is the one that helps us so that we don't become victims. We remember what, as victors we are. Hallelujah. Amen. And that is why, if you look at the scripture of First um, Chronicles 21, verse 1 to 3, you see how King David was tempted. Right? That was something that the, the enemy came against him and he fell, he fell for it. So when you find yourself as a prayerful person, now, what could have made King David to have, fall, to have fallen for this um, the devil's temptation? Simply because probably was not involved in prayers. Because prayer would have made him understand that this is from the enemy. And prayer would have conditioned his spirit, you know, make him more sensitive to, the, to, to that um, decision, that that decision should not be taken in that direction. We would have taken the, the, the decision in a different direction. And that would have what, averted the temptation. Hallelujah. Amen. So that you don't have to fall into temptations. Yes, temptations will come, but what the Lord wants from you is that what? You don't fall a victim into those temptations. But those temptations will come, and you only come out what? Victorious. Now, first Corinthians, first, first Chronicles 21, 1 to 3. If you study that scripture, I will, I will, I will read the um, early part of the scripture. It says, Now, Satan entered the scene, his scene and seduced David into taking a census of Israel. David gave order to Joab and the army officers under him. Canvas all the tribes of Israel from Dan to Beersheba and get a count of, a count of the population. I want to know the number. Joab res- resisted. Now, Joab understood that this was not from God. You see that? Even that alone would have made David to know that this is not from God. Joab was resisted. May God multiply his people by hundreds. Don't they all belong to, to my master, the king? But why on earth will you do a thing like this? Why risk getting Israel into trouble with God? So now Joab alone, that means that God was giving David a room of escape through the voice of Joab. You see that? But David at that time, I believe, was not being prayerful, not found prayerful. So he fell into the temptation of the enemy. Because that alone, Joab's response alone was a, a way of escape. Hallelujah. Amen. And if you look at, if you study further in that scripture, you see that the children of Israel, they suffered because of um, their decision that David made. At last, the, God had to send his prophet to ask David to choose what? One of the punishments out of the three. And children of Israel had to what? Go through that time of what? Of suffering because of, 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 of what? Testing because of how the, um, their king chose, made, made the wrong decision. That is why, that's why if you look at the book of First Corinthians 30 verse 13. First Corinthians 10 verse 13. First Corinthians 10 verse 13. You see that the Lord talks about the escape. So in the case of, in the case of, um, King David, God has provided a way of what? Escape. But because he was not found prayerful, so he was not sensitive to know how God was providing a way of escape. So he did not have himself fall into temptation of the enemy. Now when I look at that early part, it makes us understand that what? It was the devil that did it. He said, now Satan entered the scene and seduced David. So that that first Corinthians that first Chronicle shows us that what it was the devil that what that seduced him to do such a thing, but he didn't know. David didn't know. Glory be to God. Now let's see First Corinthians ten verse thirteen. It says, "We all experience times of testing." You see that times of what 
testing, which is normal for every human being. So testing is normal. The devil trying to tempt um, um, David, King David, was normal, right? But what God wants from you and I is that what? We overcome all temptation, right? That we overcome all temptations through prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. Even Jesus was, temp- was tempted. He was tempted in the wilderness, right? He was t- tempted three times, but he never fell for any of them. So we all experience times of testing, which is normal for every human being. But God will be faithful to you. He will screen, he will, he will screen and filter the severity, nature, and timing of every test or trial you face on that, on that, if you face so that you can bear it. And each test is an opportunity to trust Him more. Hallelujah. Amen. Each test is an opportunity to do what? Trust Him more. For along with every trial, God has provided for you a way of escape that will bring you out of, out of it victoriously. You see that? So that means the test, everybody will go through tests, but it's not a matter of the enemy bringing the test to you. Every test I've come to make you will trust God more. And even in the midst of that test, God will only allow that which is what, allow, will allow that which you can bear. He will not allow you to go through a test that you cannot bear, right? So the test will be what you can bear. And God himself will provide you a way of escape. You see that? So God is faithful to provide a way of escape. So that means what everything you need not to force that temptation has been given to you. But how sensitive are you in the realm of the spirit? How sensitive are you? How have you conditioned your spirit? Through prayer and through the word of God. But today we're talking about what? True prayer. So that when these things happen, you know that this is from the enemy. So that you don't have to pray against it. But as long as you keep yourself in fellowship with the spirit and of, of the word, that means what? To make you sensitive to these plans of the enemy, to the temptations of the enemy. And you never fall into any of them in my Lord Jesus' name. Amen. It says, and each test is an opportunity to trust him more. So if God has allowed any test to come around you, it's only, it's only an opportunity, opportunity for you to watch, trust him more. Glory. Hallelujah. That's why if you look at the book of Matthew 26, verse 41, 41, it says, Matthew 26, 41, it says, Keep alert and pray that you will be spared from this time of testing. Your spirit is eager enough, but your humanity is weak. You see that? So we must, it was what? Keep alert and pray. Hallelujah. Now, from our absolute of realities, we can get our first scripture coming to us saying in Luke chapter 24, verse 40 to 42. Luke 24, 40 to 42. It says, And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that he enter not into temptation. Who was saying this to them? Jesus, right? He says so that we should pray that we do not enter into what? Temptation. That means prayer itself will make us, help us make the right choices. Prayer, I believe that what prayer does for every one of us is that it makes us more sensitive, sensitive about the spirit, in the realm of the spirit. Because prayer is about communication, about fellowship in the, in the spirit. So when you pray, you are more sensitive in the, about, about the things of the spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. No one, as, 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 no one, exemplified the power of prayer in overcoming temptation better than our Lord Jesus. Hebrews 5 verse 7 gives us an idea why he prayed to the Father the way he did. In our theme scripture, he, Jesus, shrank shrank from from the horror of separation from the bright presence of the Father. Hallelujah. Now, you see, that Hebrews 5 verse 7 gives us an idea why he prayed to the Father, right? Because he, Jesus, was, he said what? He shrank from the word, the aura of separation. When he went on the cross of Calvary, was when he was separated from the Father, right? And for that reason, he prayed. That separation from the Father was, was what he never wanted to experience even for a moment. As a result, he knelt and prayed. And, he, he, and as he did, something remarkable happened. There appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. Hallelujah. The 44th, the 44th verse says, And be in agony, he, Jesus, prayed more earnestly. So that means what? These temptations, when they are coming to you, it are set in front of you. Sometimes it comes, you feel it within you. It can come as a sign of fear. Right? So Jesus knew that this was going to happen to him. That was going to be separated from the Father for a moment because of the sin of the whole world was going to be at that moment. 
But now he had to pray earnestly. So that agony came around him and he perceived it. And what did he do? He prayed earnestly. Hallelujah. Amen. He prayed earnestly. You see that? He prayed what? Earnestly. That's why he says, and being in agony, he, Jesus, prayed more earnestly. He prayed more earnestly. So that means when you perceive something is about going wrong, or you perceive there's a temptation around, um, around the corner, that's not the time for you to just keep quiet. That's the time for you to what? Pray more earnestly. You pray against those things so that you don't fall into that temptation. You pray and speak words over that temptation so that when, when that temptation, when the, when the time of, when the hour of that temptation comes, you're, you're, you make the right choices and choose the right words. You make the right, the right decision. So that you don't fall, you don't fall a victim. When the Lord has provided, provided for you a way of escape, you take hold of that escape moment. If David was found prayerful, when Job had told him about, uh, I've made those words known to him, David, King David, he would have known that, yes, these things that he was about doing was not from God. That would have made it to stop and then not go further and do it. So you have somehow overcome the temptation of the enemy. Hallelujah. Amen. Remember, the earnest prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. So Jesus prayed earnestly because of that temptation that was in front of him. Made what? Tremendous what? Power available, dynamic in its working. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus, being in agony, prayed more earnestly. His prayer was so intense that the Bible says his sweat became like great clots of blood dropping down upon the ground. That was how, how earnestly he prayed. So what is that thing that is coming around you or you feel, you perceive that the enemy has set against you? This of you to complain about it or move into, you know, take, take it casually. What do you do? You pray earnestly. The more you feel it, the more you pray about it. You can change things. That's why prayer is so important. With prayer, you can program things. That means what exactly are you trying to do? You are reprogramming what the enemy has programmed against you. You see that? You are reprogramming what the enemy has what? Programmed against you through prayer. So you can't just be a, a, a Christian that doesn't, that, that, that doesn't recognize that you are currently in a battle um, field. As a child of God, living in this flesh, it's, it's, it's still a battlefield for you. And what God wants from you and I is that we live victorious against the works of flesh, the works of the enemy. Some of these temptations can come as, 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 as what? The works of flesh. It might be the things that you, the Lord has helped you out. You know, when you got born again, he has saved you from these things, from the, you know, from the works of flesh. Now, the enemy wants to tempt you in the same works of flesh that used to, um, ha- you know, get to be involved in time past. So, at every level, that, that various ways of, tempt- of, of the enemy uh, try to tempt you as a child of God. Hallelujah. Amen. But as long as you can keep yourself in the place of prayer, when those temptations come to you, when the enemy tries to, you know, tempt you one way or the other, it might even look pleasant, but you know that this is not from God. Your choices will be made rightly because you are a man of what have given to the thoughts of God through the word and prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. Thanks be unto God, his prayer was answered. He submitted himself to the will of the Father by becoming sin for us so we could become the righteousness of God in him. Hallelujah. Amen. When he was done praying, he said something instructive to his disciples as seen in Luke 22, verse 45 to 46. When he rose from, from prayer and went back to the disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping? He asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, the problem isn't being tempted, but falling into the temptation. You see that? It's not about being tempted. Now, you see that because Peter did not pray, Peter fell into temptation. In other words, the Lord said, you're going to deny him three times. Before the, the cock would crow, you know, Jesus, um, Peter was going to deny him what, three times. And that was the temptation the enemy had against him. And because Peter did not pray, he fell into that temptation. And when he faced that temptation, he felt ashamed of himself. So that means prayer can help you not to fall into what the enemy has planned against you. So that, now I know what a lot of them was. He says, get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. You will not fall into temptation. The problem isn't being tempted, but falling into the temptation. So temptation will come around you on a daily basis. It doesn't matter how they come, where they come from. It doesn't matter where they come from. What the Lord wants from His word, you don't fall into those temptations because you have found prayerful. And prayer will help to humble you. A man that prays is a man that stays humble. You know that? Prayer will keep you humble. Prayer will make you not to have pride in you. And pride is what is, 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 is a step toward fall. You know, before every fall comes forth, pride comes before, every, before the fall of a man, right? 
So the prayer will keep you in that place of what? Of, you know, be, you know, to stay humble so that you don't fall into that temptation of the enemy. Hallelujah. Amen. And now we look at the same scripture. If you look at that scripture of Hebrews 5, verse 5 to 7, it also shows us that Jesus himself was humbled through what? Prayer. So he didn't have to fall into the temptation of making himself appear as God. Even him being God, by coming into this earth, taking, up, taking the, 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 the very flesh of a man, the word of God becoming flesh, right? That means what? He humbled himself. And not to, how did he humble himself? Not to make himself as God to men. It was true prayer because it was found what? Praying. So prayer makes you to stay humble. And when a man stays humble, that means what? He cannot what? God cannot what? Elevate you. God cannot lift you up. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's for your own advantage that you stay what? In the place of prayer. Now people have been tempted. They will try to tempt them. And then now they feel that they have this thing. Maybe they are, God has given them the privilege to receive some revelational knowledge from his word. Now because of that, they begin to brag about certain things. And they move in, in the wrong direction. You see, you see, they see them talking, about, talking against the fathers of faith. Yes, by God's grace. Now you are a child that was born because of the fathers of faith preached the gospel. And then now God has given you a revelation because of, you know, the, 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 the light shines brighter and brighter, right? Right? From glory to glory. And so you now have been born out of the fathers of faith who preached the gospel to you, right? And then you have been born out of it. Now God, God has taught you and then they have imparted with their own knowledge and God has given you much more. And you feel like you have more revelation. As long as you understand that what, you, even if you have much of that revelation, you will not fall a prey in the hand of the enemy. By making yourself come up to the place of pride, you know, that you have it all, you have more. Now, when, I, when, you, when the people, fathers of faith, people who taught you the word is teaching you again, you feel like you don't, you don't, they, they should not talk to you any longer because you've got something more. So prayer will condition your spirit so you don't think in that direction. So you don't even walk in such manner. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, when I look at that Hebrews 5, 5 to 7, it says, In the same way, Christ did not take on himself the glory of becoming a high priest. But God said to him, you are my son. Today I have become your father. And he says in one place, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. So he did not take up the glory of becoming what? A high priest. You didn't see him take up the glory, like trying to brag about it. You never heard about Jesus bragging about anything on the street. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayer and prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because his reverent submission. Hallelujah. Amen. His reverent word, submission. He was heard. So he didn't feel like, how will he talk to God? Him being God, how will he not talk to the Father? Now, because he's the Son of God, how will he not talk to the Father? You have to submit yourself. You have to involve yourself in prayer. Never you think you know it all. Only by the, by the help of the Spirit of God can we what, excel in this life. We are helped by God. Say, I'm helped by God. I'm helped by God. So we must involve ourselves in what? In prayer. In prayer. So don't fall into temptation. So temptation will come, which is normal, but you are not to fall into it. You see that? You have to what? Not to fall into that temptation. So the problem is not the temptation, but what, what? You fall into temptation as well, where the problem comes. Jesus here shows us we must pray to avoid falling into what? Temptation. Remember, he was about to experience the horror of being separated from the Father and how to wrestle with the temptation to say, no, I'm not doing this. You see that? That was the horror of what? Being separated from the Father. No, I'm not doing this. He knew he had to pray because he had himself thought that men ought always to pray and not to faint. What is this trying to show us here? If Jesus had, you know, have come to the time of, of crucifixion, uh, the time that he was to be crucified, and then he said, no, he was not going to die for the, for the sins of the men, of, of, of the world. Do you know what I would have done? That would have what? That, would, that means what? We have fallen into the temptation of the enemy, right? Remember that if there was anything that the devil wanted, probably the devil had known that killing, you know, crucifying Jesus on the cross would have brought forth you and I. They wouldn't have gone, have gone forth with what he was trying to do. You see that? But he had to, he had to be kept what, secret in the heart of God for it to be accomplished. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So you must understand that what men ought always to pray, not to faint. Like the master, give yourself to prayer. And I look at even when they tried, even when Pilate was almost trying to talk Jesus out of what die for the sins of men, Jesus had to keep quiet. Jesus had to keep keep quiet because he knew the purpose why he came on this earth. In the place of prayer, your spirit is conditioned to descend and walk in God's perfect will. 
So he just knew God's perfect will that he was going to pay the price for the sins of, of, of you and I. So he allowed that word to prevail. Glory be to God. Amen. And your faith is strengthened to overcome temptations and rule over circumstances. You are invigorated with the might of the Spirit to live victoriously every day. Hallelujah. Amen. So that's what the Lord wants for you and I. With the mind of the Spirit, if you can with the mind of what? The Spirit, to live victoriously every day. So if you involve yourself in prayer, that means what? You're having that sweet fellowship with the Holy Spirit. For He's going to help you in prayer as well. So by doing so, you have, you have yourself what? Living victoriously every day. And that's what God desires for you and I. And I'll be your portion from this day upwards in my Lord Jesus' name. Amen. If you have been in time past for any temptation, may you, find, may you fall no more in my Lord Jesus' name. Amen. From today, your spirit will be conditioned through prayer. Amen. That when those temptations come against you, you will know that this is from the enemy. Amen. Yes, in every direction they may have come from, you will not fall a victim into those temptations anymore, my Lord Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to be praying this. Hallelujah. Amen. Say these words with me. Say, Dear Father, yes. sorry, say, Dear Lord. Yes. Thank you, Thank you for the privilege, for the privilege and blessing of prayer. A place where my spirit is conditioned, is conditioned to, descend to descend and walk in your perfect way always. Your perfect will. And my faith, and my faith is, strengthened is strengthened to overcome temptations, to overcome temptations and, rule and rule over circumstances. I'm fully equipped. I'm fully equipped. I'm fortified. I'm fortified. Strong in the Lord. Strong in the Lord. And in the power of His might. In the power of his to mind. triumph graciously today. To triumph graciously today. And always. And always. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. Thank God for indeed that you have found him as a man of prayer. We need to declare that from today I'm involved in prayer and my spirit is conditioned to make the right choices, to make the right decision. I will not fall a prey in the hand of the enemy. In everything that I do, I have understanding from this by the Spirit. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, I'm strengthened to overcome temptations and rule over circumstances. I'm invigorated with the mind of the Spirit to live up, to live victoriously up every day. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you for the Spirit is, and my Spirit is conditioned to descend and walk in your perfect way always. To descend and walk your perfect way always. And my faith, O oh Lord, is strengthened to overcome temptation, to overcome temptation, to overcome temptation and rule over circumstances. I'm fully equipped. And fortified, strong in the Lord and in the power of His might to triumph graciously today and always. Oh, Baraba Shata, Baro Sharabranda, Rikata Kata 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 Kata. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, King of Glory. None shall fall into temptation of the enemy. Marikanda Makuchkaba, Zerebronde, 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 that will live holy and blameless before you. All the days of our lives, O oh Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father, we we'll bless your name. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I declare for you from today, just like the Master, you will give yourself to prayer. Amen. And every time you pray, your spirit will be conditioned to descend and walk in God's perfect will. Amen. Even as you go forth to do the things of today, may you walk in God's perfect will. Amen. May you not find as a person that will tell lies or involve yourself in any form of temptation any enemy may set before you. Whatever temptation the enemy says before you, may you live above them all. Amen. Above every, over every circumstance in my Lord Jesus' name. Amen. That you will not fall a victim in every temptation of the enemy. Amen. But you always come out was strong in the, in the Lord Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father, for your children are strengthened, O oh Lord, Amen. to overcome temptations and to rule over circumstances. Amen. They are invigorated with your mind of the with the mind of the uh, with the mind of the spirit Amen. to live victoriously every day, Amen. even this day in my Lord Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The, now we declare that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit abounds with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So I expect us to pray more often and pray fervently. Always in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Do have a lovely day.